Hey, tune in next time on Talk in Maine to see Jane Woodman talk about Bonnie Woods, this wonderful asset that the community of Farmington has. It, it may be hard to see, but bear with me. Picture a group of immigrants are digging out what a... No, they're oh. digging out a reservoir hole. Oh, no kidding. By wheelbarrow, they're building this, and if you see it on all sides, it goes out, and they just kept dumping the, the dirt. And that reservoir hole was bigger than a football field, and but deep enough to hold 5 million wow. gallons of water. This program is brought to you in part by the generous support of these sponsors. Skowhegan Savings Bank. Franklin Community Health Network. The Rotary Club of Farmington. And community members like you. Thank you. Welcome to Talking Maine with the Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Saviello, and my, my special friend and guest, Jane Woodman. Jane, welcome. Good morning. We're, we're going to talk about Bonnie Hills, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie Woods. Woods. Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie. And so before we do that, you're with the Farmington Historical Society. Yes. You are the curator, in my opinion, extraordinaire, because <laughs> you, you know where it all is, which not very still many Still learning. Still, still learning. learning. I mean, yes. it's fascinating what you guys have been able to collect up here. And, and I always tell people, if you want to have an interesting time with people that come to visit, find out when some of these historical societies are open and go spend time. Because the historical society has, what, three buildings? We do. Okay. We do. And both the Tickham House and the Octagon House are open on Fridays from May through to October from 10 to 2. And you should, if you're around and you've had a relative visit, you should go see it because the history of Farmington is so rich. It's like Wilton. It's like Strong. They all have a special place, and you don't realize all the things that were here. No, and we're getting more all the time. Really? We are. Is it from families that have discovered stuff that they had yes. in there? Yes. Wow. Yes, and, uh, and that's, the, that's the fun part because they come with stories oh, yeah. most of the time, and we try to listen carefully. But if we get it in the mail, we ask them to put a little information wow. for us. So we're going to talk about you. Bonnie Woods, the Bonnie Woods Corporation, which was a state of Maine first public park right it here was. in Farmington. It was. So tell it me was. the story. Let's start with the first slide. We have the, the uh, bird's, bird's eye view of Powder Hill in, in 1878. It was, and that uh, bird's eye views maps were all over the United States and maybe beyond. And so this was one, it was Farmington. They, the lithograph artist would come to town and they would have a map of the streets, kind of drawn out or the town provided it. Or, and then they would sketch. Well, first they'd go to the top of the where they could it's overlook. Overseas. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the bird's eye view comes from. So they went on top of Powder House Hill. And that they would sketch the num they would sketch the number of windows in each building, the doors, all the outbuildings, and any feature that they had. Wow. And then they would put any special house or building, they would put a number on it and the legend of it the map, they would state what that is. And the hours were particularly done by Thaddeus Mortimer Fowler. And he, he, his age was from 1842 to 1922. So these just, it was just a wonderful find. It was such a find that we had copies made, and they are available at the Tickham House. So it's interesting because Wilton's got the same thing. My yes. kids, my kids gave me one for a, a, you know a cotton, not the original, obviously, but a print yeah. of what was done. So now I better understand what that was. I didn't realize that that's how they did it because yeah. they must have gotten up on the like where I am, Applegate Hill, Applegate Hill, or the mountain by me, or or a Bass Hill, and looked down into the village and drew yeah. it up. Yeah. Wow, I have to go look at that picture again now. now that, that that isn't available. Wow. So. 
The, so this is. That's, and, and did somebody bring that to you guys, or did we have some originals? Oh, you have some originals. Wow. We do. We have probably three. So one in the octagon and one in the Tickham House, and um, it's just yeah. It's so unique. And they actually identify who lived in the house too, or just no, the structure. Okay. Just the structure. But we have ways to learn about uh, the, who, who is there. Yes, wow. we do. Wow. So we can get on with Bonnie Woods. Okay. We've got the picture. Okay. All right. So Bonnie Woods. The, now we have the plaque. The yes. Bonnie Woods. Um, this was James Hiram Bonnie, Daniel Marston Bonnie, and their daughter, Emma, or someone. Actually, so, it was, this was a stone that was put in in 1905. Wow. By those three people, <clears throat> James Bonnie, his brother Daniel, and Daniel's wife, was Emma Prentice Bonnie. Those names are important. And the charter of the Bonnie Woods Corporation was formed by people who lived in the area or citizens of Farmington. And it was incorporated in 1909 by the state of Maine as the first public park for recreation to be used by the people of Franklin County. Oh, wow. Not just Farmington. So we entire we really encourage that. And that is a ten acre Stand hemlock uh, forest. Oh, as so you it mentioned is hemlock. earlier. Okay. Uh, the second one for uh, screen is the street coming up so the next from picture. Anson. Yeah, so, coming so, up so from the, the Bonnie family own that property as part of their their house? Or, yes. And they donated it to become a park? It wasn't part of their house. Brother James owned the 10 acres, and he lived in Massachusetts. And Bonnie and Emma came to, they settled in Farmington. Uh, so the, the, he owned it, and so they didn't really, they settled here, but then he don they donated that together to the town and to the ultimate, wow. Yes, to make the Bonnie Woods Corporation, and they were parts of the charter of members as well. So this is now driving towards Bonnie Woods? That it is, and if you, it, Bonnie Woods would be on your right, and this is, was called Edgewood Road, and we know it today as Anson Street, but why Anson Street? It was because the next settlement was Anson. Uh -huh. This was before industry was uh -huh. even created or founded. And there are other streets in town like that, like Quebec Street. It's on the way to Quebec. No, but that's where the French Canadian came in and settled in that area. Uh -huh. Because they were closest to the church. It's interesting, and I, it took me a couple to, to understand this, but when I was campaigning, I'd get on the, the Rome Road. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going outside of Farmington yep. Falls, and I'm sitting there, why are they calling the Rome Road? Then I realized it was going to the town of Rome. It's the Fairfield Road, because it's on the way to Fairfield. So I can see this is on the way to Anson. So, so that's, that's, and Anson was the bordering town in Farmington right. one time. Wow. Huh. And then you've got Orchard Street, which where is around Bonnie Woods. And if you are at Orchard Park of today, you look down the street. At the end of that street was an orchard. And it was on the west side, so it got the good sign. And it's also the one that borders up to the uh, Beaver Dome, right? Is no. It, no, because there's more apple trees right down there, so there must have been an orchard there at some point. Well, we'd have to look, look on have to the, look at that map. We'll that's have to all right. Look but at the map, because they did put the, some of the trees in on the map. Wow. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. Yeah. So this next photo is taken in 1920, <laughs> which was the Tickham family in the Bonnie Woods. Harold Abbott Tickham on the right, his wife Ethel, and their son John. Now, this, some people don't like this picture because John did shoot the owl. But at that time, in the 20s, that's the only way they could study birds. So last summer, in 2023, the, the young man entered the Tickham house. And I showed him the picture. He goes, that owl was stuffed and it's in the family collection. Wow. So if... It's maybe someday the Tickham House will have that as a show. But that is what 
So this was that, taken in 1920. 1920. So the young man in that picture might have been 10 or 11, maybe? Correct. So he, he, he's not still around, though. No, but actually, was, John Abbott Tickham Memorial Ski Slope. Uh, he was the he captain? Was, he was, yes. He was killed in World War II okay. at the very end of the war. And then the ski slope was named after okay. him by the family, and which we have a wonderful ski yeah, yeah, area because yeah. of that. Wow. The next one is the Belcher Cemetery, which is located on the west end of, of Bonnie Woods. Is it in the park itself? It is. It's right, and it's maintained by the town of Farmington. And there are seven Belcher family members buried there from 1832 to 2000. And one well-known person there is Samuel Belcher, who is known as a lawyer, judge, postmaster, and the president of the Sandy River Bank. And, then, and the Belcher family was instrumental in helping settle this area. Supply Belcher. Sure. We'll hear about him in a minute as well. Well, and, uh, hi, I have to go hiking through Hump Bonnie Woods now to find all this stuff. Yes, and that is, you know, that is 10 acres. But our second... A uh, group of land, piece of land, was given to Bonnie Woods by James Prentice Flint. And he was the grand nephew of the earlier Bonnie family. And Flint Woods has 44 acres. Oh, wow. But this plaque I would love to read because it has such meaning. In loving memory of James P. Flint. Jim Flint made these woods part of Bonnie Woods in 1987. Jim loved the outdoors and walked here daily with his dogs, Miss Muffy and Lucky. <laughs> he knew how the power and beauty of nature can calm our anxieties and refresh our souls. He gave Flint Woods to the citizens of Franklin County so that they may have a place to get away from challenges of daily life and enjoy the quiet of nature. On July 31st, 1995, he passed away peacefully by the trout pond at the age of 87. And this plaque was put together by the trustees of Bonnie Woods. Wow. So, so he gave him 44 acres of his land, okay. to add, it, it butts right up to the Bonnie Woods. Right. Wow. I'm quite sure that this was in the Prentice family. And Jim was a member of that. He was a grandnephew. And it was just the respect and the generosity of people giving this amount of land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, this was, the plaque is near Jim's fishing pond. And this is a picture of the pond? And that's the picture of the pond. Jim's first fish pond was one of the original Bonnie Aqueduct Company's wells. And the wells measured 10 feet in diameter and 10 feet deep. And Jim had a large wooden cover built to go over that well. I don't know if it was to cover the, was to protect the young kids around it. Or protect his trout. Or protect his trout from the young anglers. But in time, he decided that a pond was a better feature. So, so was that water used for the community? or, or that, became, that was Bonnie Aqueduct Company. And that pond, the well, there's one well above it, which we'll see in a minute. And there are those lines that connect here, and it was all spring-fed. And so that, they broke that line to make the pond. And so that spring-fed. And it goes down to a third well. And then from the third well into town, or is that where you'd go? It did, you know? at one time. Wow. So this is a little bit more about the Bonnie Aqueduct Company. It was created in 1888, which was just two years after 1886 fire took out Main Street, the, the, the west side of Main Street. And Bonnie Aqueduct Company was made to provide fresh water to parts of the village, but more... More, it was for providing water to cisterns that were located in town. So you could get your water out of it. And that was for fire protection. And the cisterns were located at street intersections and made out of granite slabs. Wow. 
So <laughs> the, the intersections that I know of is the courthouse where Anson Street hits Main Street. There was one there. And can you imagine logging trucks going through <laughs> town? Uh, the other one is between is the, near the Octagon House, where Parham Street and Broadway intersect with High Street. And the last one on, was on Lower Broadway, and I'm not sure exactly where, but the reason that one was built there is the Bonnies lost a building in the 1886 fire. So they wanted to protect yeah. their land. And I, they did, I believe. So this was like a, a cistern being, it was a, built out of the granite, and they would fill it with water, and they would maintain the water, and if they needed it, they could take it out to fight a fire. That's right, and I'm not sure exactly how that all worked. I, yeah, But, but you know, it was the closest thing to a hydrant that yeah, they had. Yeah, and I would imagine time. with the fire trucks, when you had the hand pumps, they could come in and fill up the truck or run a hose from it to put out a exactly. fire. Exactly. So they had a water supply. When the fire hit, they had no water supply. They had to run up and down to the river, I assume. Yes, they get, did. Yeah, get water. And when they did the 1886 fire, the tr train brought people from Lewiston yeah. and Portland. To come up and look at the fire. To come, no, yeah, they the fire, brought equipment. The, oh, is that right? Oh. They did. Oh. And one, the last one to arrive, of course, was Portland. And they got a horse that took the hose up to the top and put their hose in the ox, in ox bowl, which is where yeah, yeah. the river was at one time. And that's the only thing that stopped the fire down by South Street. No kidding. I did not know that. That's a little aside. Wow. Uh, I do remember that they did have tourists come up after everything was burned down on the train to look at the fire. Oh, they I, did. I, yeah. They did. We, okay. We, we, this, is the the, uh, this is the first well. And that was made out of brick. And the other two wells were made out of cobblestone and granite pieces. Uh, this is an unusual thing to be found at the, in the Flint woods. It's a witch hazel tree. And it lives across from the first aqueduct well, which is on the old wells trail. And the tree is rarely found in Maine. It's a deciduous tree or shrub that has fragrant flowers that bloom in October. And the only way they bloom in October is they have a good freeze oh, wow. the winter before. So that's a very unusual, and I am determined that tree will never get cut down. <laughs> uh, this picture is of the willows, and the willows was built by the son of Supply Belcher, who was one of the first settlers. And this is on land that was, because Supply had one of the original uh, plots of land, and this was on that. So this is a three-story building that was built in 1871 by General Belcher for his daughter Lucy because she wanted to have a women's school. Oh. Huh. The school only lasted a few years because there were a number of new schools coming into Farmington. Farmington was a huge, and still is, education center. And later the, winds, the uh, Willows became a hotel. And then it was converted into dorm rooms for the... Um, University? Well, normal school. Normal school. 1923. So, but the building itself is gone now. It has. Hmm. Um, there is a Willows apartment house there now, but that was not this building. Oh, interesting. New discovery. Huh. And we really oh, need to yep. stay on that one for a minute. We'll, behind there, you see that Water, round oh, yeah. thing which was the Wa Farmington Water Company's standpipe that was built in 1891, again after the fire. 1886 fire, and on top of a bald powder house hill. Not a tree to be seen up there. But that powder house hill was the first ski area oh, really? for the Franklin County Ski Club. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. That photo, that... We can go on. Okay. The, this is a photo of the remains of the standpipe that was discontinued in 1936. The original standpipe was 25 feet tall and 48 feet in diameter, in diameter and held 250,000 gallons Ooh. of water. And that water came from the Sandy River. 
Right. So that had to be pumped up. up to that area and then dispersed to the village through gravity. <laughs> and today the base is just covered with soils, grasses, and a good crop of poison ivy. All right. This is an interesting slide. It, it may be hard to see, but bear with me. Picture a group of immigrants are digging out One a... Line. No, they're oh. digging out a reservoir hole. Oh, no kidding. By wheelbarrow, they're building this, and if you see it on all sides, it goes out, and they just kept dumping the, the dirt. And that reservoir hole was bigger than a football field, and but deep enough to hold 5 million wow. gallons of water. For, and that was fire protection. Again, an 18... I don't have the date. Did they fill it with water, actually, then? Yes. They did, wow. It became a big pillow, and that was used right up on within the last seven years. No kidding. Huh. And it was like a big pillow filled with water. The frogs love to jump around the oh, top on that one. <clears throat> and, again, that was fire protection and drinking water. And in time, it... They, the river was no longer used for a source, and wells were put in, as well as Varnum Pond. But that is a whole other story. Yeah. So in 1930s, oh, I just told that one. This is the Village Woods, became part of the Powder House Hill Trail System in 2011. Bonnie Woods approached the Village Farmington Village Corporation because they have adjoining land, to have trails on all that land. And this is the newest sign that can be found at the Flint Woods head, uh, trailhead. And it notes the additional lines, uh, excuse me, adjacent lands. Right, the map. The map does. And I believe it's kind of a medium green is Hornwoods. And Hornwoods, in last December, 2023, the Horns family donated 63 acres oh, wow. to the adjoining Flint Woods. Wow. And the land features Craig's Ledge. When I was a kid, Craig's Ledge was where people hung out. I, did, I haven't even seen it yet. The name... Powder House Hill. That was given to these pieces of land back, as we saw earlier, it was just a bear, yeah. is where the Farmington's Brick Magazine Powder House right. was where the deposits of military stores, like in case we needed powder yeah, right, 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 right. And that was built in 1817. Wow. And by 1846, the powder house had been decommissioned and was vandalized by, quote, a race of boys. Oh, terrible. And that's a quote from Thomas Parker, who was a historian. But the trail system we see here is 188 acres. Wow. And 117 of those are owned by Bonnie Woods Corporation. Wow. From 10 acres to that much. Wow. Yes. Wow. And so the last slide here it tells you more about Farmington Historical Society. Wow, that's fantastic. I mean, it grew. So you think about the seed that was planted, 10 acres. Right. And then over time, people put that. And it's so unusual to have a green space like that in the middle of a town. I mean, I grew up in New Jersey. I know, I know, I'm from New Jersey. And in the back of my house, my, my father was literally born a block away from where I lived. And there was a, when I grew up until I was like seven years old, you had to walk through the woods to get to my grandmother. Well, now it's all built up. But in the back of my house was 13 acres of woods. Wow. And at the town, at the time, the town wanted to sell it for this $1,000 an acre. Well, nobody had that money. It stayed until 1966 when the first Earth Day took place. And they realized they had this green space of 13 acres, and it's still there. Now, that, nobody added to it because it's built up all around it, yeah. but it's still is the same idea. It is. And the, well, it is used. You can go into Bonnie Woods, and you can hike, you can bike. Uh, no motorized vehicles. Cross-country ski. 
um, snowshoeing, wow. year-round walk dogs. It's, it's and we can put up. So if somebody has questions about this or wants to volunteer to help, they can they just connect connect with the historical society on any of those. So what what we, we can do is we'll put up right across here the email for the historical society. Can you see it? It's running right there. Yes, I it? can see that. And then uh, how people can get in touch if they have anything or just want to visit the historical society. That's a phenomenal story. It, and it's we are so fortunate to yeah. have, as you said, so close to town. Yeah. Um, and the the aqueduct company, yeah, we kind of have a taste of that still, because that water is still running. It's just so people go up and get their water, spring water. No, no. but it's still it comes downtown uh, and had some problems with some uh, places every once in a while. Like at the Main Street a couple of years ago. Oh no. yeah, it it the bon, the octagon house was a recipient of water. We fixed that. Um, it is an interesting, oh, the reason it stopped, it had lead pipes. They were poisoning their own. Oh, my goodness. So that it didn't last an awful long time. And thank goodness the Farmington Village Corporation had their water department and were able to bring portable water. Wow. To Do you know how many miles of trail is in there? You said there were a lot of trails, but did anybody ever? I don't off the top of my head. That's okay. It's just something I thought about. Yeah. But if somebody wants to hike the trails, they're well and marked. there are maps. There yeah. should be, if you go to that sign in Flint Woods, in that parking area, there should be maps there. And use them, take them with you, but if you're not going to use them, take them home, put them back okay. in there for other people. And Franklin Savings Bank do print those for Oh, wow, cool. And then this is open 24 hours a day? It is. 365 days of the year? It is. It's an asset that the town of the community has that anybody can use if they want That's to. That's right. It's, it has no connection to the town of Farmington. And everything that's done in there is volunteer. I can't say that. We do have people that will uh, work. We have the... Um, I lost my thought. Yeah, so we people, have people who volunteer to maintain the, tra the trails, and we always can use more people. Then if you want to help out and, and spend some time, you've got an email to go look for. And Jane, this is great. Thank you. It was, Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show and talking about Bonnie Woods. My pleasure. As, Anything having to do with pictures and history. And you, just, you have a little connection to photographs. And lots, history. A lot. A lot. Lots of it. Well, thank you. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Talking Me.